What's going on guys, Archangel here with a brand new video for you guys. Today I want to talk about Halo Reach, which originally, for those who don't know, was the original, most like hated, most controversial Halo game. Back when Reach came out, it was the game that Bungie made changes on from the ground up. It wasn't the same Halo that you played with Halo 1 through 3. And based on, now people have their own personal feelings towards the campaign, but from the mechanical standpoint to, you know, how the armor worked, how guns worked, things like that, Halo Reach was heavily criticized. And part of that criticism is why Bungie no longer makes Halo games, even though half of Bungie still stayed back with Microsoft and became 343. But part of why that change happened was because Halo Reach went through such a, a controversial, um, feedback from, from the fan base so where microsoft needed a change they had to and that change was made so before you had halo 4 which was you know criticized heavily uh before you had halo 5 which was crit criticized even more than halo 4 halo reach was the original criticized halo game because it was different and when you're different from the normal that, 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 a, commu that a community is used to you're going to get a lot of flack but halo reach did a lot of great things and Yes, we we can point out that yes, the armor abilities were a huge flaw. Armor lock, huge flaw. You know, I said before that the only thing a Spartan should have is just sprint and you know the, the thruster movement that, that Halo Four, and Halo Five has. I think that's reasonable. But outside of you no know, sprint and the thruster abilities, I feel like you should not have anything else in a Halo game when it comes to an armor ability. And a lot of fans feel that way as well, which is why Halo Reach multiplayer. You know, got as much hatred as it did because you know of all the armor abilities, how they worked, and you know how easy it was to to abuse them. But that's not what this video is about. This video is not about you know what Halo Reach did wrong. It's actually about a very small detail in Halo Reach that is phenomenal, and that's the leveling system. Halo Reach has the best leveling system in a shooter. Most shooters leveling system is pretty terrible especially nowadays nowadays is pretty bad nowadays there's basically no reward for leveling up other than hey i'm a new level and that's about it you know now because back in the day when it came to like 360 days you know, the, the halo reaches of the worlds the modern warfare 2s the black ops 1s um when it came to playing multiplayer in those games leveling up got you you know new guns it got you new perks it got you you know new attachments new equipment now, especially Call of Duty, now those things aren't guaranteed. Like, yes, there's certain guns that you will get through leveling up, but there's other guns that you can only get through loot boxes or supply crates. And Halo never really did that because Halo never really had a, a system in place to where you where you would have you know, here here's a, a scope, here's a, a underbarrel, here's um, some. A, a double barrel like a, a dual magazine like halo never had those kind of attachment equipment when it came to their, their gunplay but in call of duty that was a very common it became a very common thing when it came to the, the current generation console you know the xbox one ps4 because it was more money to make by having these guns and loot boxes than it was to have these guns being level up awards or just unlock automatically when, when someone buys a dlc halo reach leveling system was phenomenal it's something that halo currently lacks i don't like Right now, when it comes to Halo 5's leveling system, I don't care about it. There's nothing unique about it. It's just, okay, I leveled up. whoop de doo there's, there's nothing fun about it. Like, Halo Reach's leveling system was kind of like Modern Warfare uh, 2, for those who didn't play Halo Reach, and you play Modern Warfare 2, in terms of your leveling is based on an actual military rank. It's not just, hey, level 40, and that's it. There's a, You level it up, and you also get... A, a emblem you also get there's a name for that you know like being a, a lieutenant colonel you're you, you get that rank you become a brigadier general you become a a, a a general you become a major like so there's actual military ranks and when you when you go through all these these leveling you get you you, you unlock you know p new pieces of armor that you can that you can can use you you get that armor with points that you get for just playing the game you know, if you want, so you can customize your character the way you want to be through just leveling up the game, through just playing the game, which is way better than say Halo Five, where armor customization just comes from the rec packs. For the most part, like for the most part, in order to to make your character in Halo in Halo Five, your character, you no know, customization wise, you got to unlock rec packs instead of just playing playing the game and unlocking 
through you know, leveling up, which is how it should be. You should always be able to unlock things just by leveling up in a video game, not because you got a red pack, not because you opened a supply crate or a loot box. It's not how it should be. And that's what Halo 6, Halo Infinite needs to be when it comes to, to, to leveling, when it comes to multiplayer leveling. It needs to be more like a reach, less like Halo 5 when it comes to how the game levels. So Halo Reach, again, is, is, is weird that we we got to a point with Reach where it became the black sheep of the Halo games. Because for the most part, when you talk about Halo Reach, a lot of people don't really consider it that good of a game. And I said this before and I'll say it again, there is no bad Halo game. There's not one bad Halo game. There's Halo games where there's things in it that's you know not favorable, but the game itself is still good. And yes, you're gonna you're gonna people who come oh, oh Halo Five was terrible. Halo Five wasn't terrible. It just wasn't what people wanted it to be. You know, there was too much of certain things in Halo Five that hurt his ability for people to enjoy it as much as they could. But it was still a good game nonetheless. You know, if you if you take out Spartan Lock, you change up you change up how a lot of people's opinions will be of Halo Five. Now, if you don't have Cortana being the main villain. You change up how people basically will see Halo 5. Because gamers aren't open-minded. Gamers do not do not have an open mind. We'll tell you, oh, we're open, I'm open-minded. I'm not a biased person. No. And we're, we're, we're bullshit. All gamers are bullshit when they say that they're open-minded and that they're not biased. They're all bullshit. The reason Halo 5 was, was trashed the way it, it has been trashed is because we weren't open-minded to an idea of, of Cortana's mission. Where she basically just doesn't want to die. She's going through rampant scene. She's way past the average age for an AI, and she's she's dying. So she goes through what she needs, to, what she's doing to prevent herself, you know, to die. So she's more of an anti-hero than a villain because even though what she's doing is is wrong, she's doing it for her, you know, for her, the betterment of herself and what she thinks is better for, for society. So we'll see how that goes in Halo Six. But when it comes to Locke, Locke's issue is we didn't want Locke. And we, 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 when we play Halo, we want to play Master Chief. Reach was the exception. We didn't mind Noble Team. But when it comes to the, the, the main Halo franchise, we want to be Chief. We don't want to play. We don't want to spend half the game playing someone else. And that's what Locke was. It was. It was spending half the game playing a character we didn't care about. A character whose only lore was the miniseries. Halo Nightfall. We didn't care about Locke, so therefore we didn't want to play as Locke. But we let our opinion of Locke and our opinion of Cortana's uh, character in Halo 5 dictate how we enjoy Halo 5. If we don't look at it from a story standpoint, how good the story was, how good the writing was, how good the voice acting was, how good the, the visuals were, how good the graphics were, how good you know, the, the mechanics were under the hood. We don't look at it from any other standpoint other than, I don't like Locke, I don't like how Cortana was portrayed, I don't like a cliffhanger ending, so therefore I don't like this game. And I said before my Halo 5 review that Cliffhanger ending should never be someone's reason for disliking a video game. Because a cliffhanger ending isn't everything that you see in the raw media. Every foreign media has a cliffhanger ending when it comes to, hey, it's going to be a sequel. Hey, it's going to be a new episode. It's going to be a new season. Every TV show, every movie does a cliffhanger. Even comics do cliffhangers. Books do cliffhangers. Every game that plans to have a sequel has, has a cliffhanger somewhere in that game. Because they want to set up the future. So I don't see... Oh, it had a cliffhanger ending, and I didn't understand it as being a reason to say that game was bad. But I'm, now I'm going on a, a tangent rant about, about Halo 5, which is not what this video is about. It's about Reach. And Reach did suffer the same thing before Halo 4 and Halo 5 were things. It suffered the same thing with people, uh, I want to be Chief. I don't want to be some random Spartan who don't talk. I want to be Chief. I don't want to play with no noble team. I want to play with Chief. Had had the same thing. But the biggest issues with Reach in terms of how the community saw it was just multiplayer. People didn't want to adapt to what, what the mechanics were. People didn't want to adapt to the armor abilities. And that's a huge thing in, in gaming entirely because people just don't want to adapt. You, you look at any form of gaming, even trading card games, Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm a big Yu-Gi-Oh player. I, I, I upload doing these videos to my channel. Um, and in Yu-Gi-Oh, there's, there's people who, they, they love Yu-Gi-Oh, but they won't play the new formats because they don't want to adapt. To them, the new, the new format is, is terrible. They, they hate the new format. They don't, fuck Pendulums, fuck XZ Summoning, fuck Lynx. I don't want to do all that. I, I don't want to do no Synchro Summoning. I just want to have regular role fusions being the only thing in extra deck. 
So they think Yu-Gi-Oh! right now is terrible because they don't want to adapt. And the same thing with video, with video games. People think something video game is bad because they, they didn't want to adapt to that. I have a friend who don't like Halo 5, don't like Halo 4, mostly because, not the story, because how movement it is. He doesn't like the movement. He doesn't like how fast everyone is now. He hates how fast Spartans are now. That's a failure to adapt. It's not the game's fault. It's your fault because you don't want to adapt. Same thing, happened, same thing happens with Halo Reach. People didn't want to adapt to the, to how the armor armor abilities worked, so they used that as reasons to say the game was bad, ignoring all the great things that Halo Reach was. Halo Reach was a phenomenal game. There is no Halo game, in my opinion, that's worse than eight. Every Halo game is an eight out of ten or better. And Reach did so much great things, and in, in again, when it comes to leveling. That's what this video is about. It's, a, it's, it's about mentioning how great Halo Reach was when it came to the leveling and the unlocks and having making your level mean something. You now, when, you, when you're going through the armor unlocks and you see, oh, I got to be a lieutenant colonel to, to get this. You play the game, you grind the game to get to the lieutenant colonel level so you can use what you wanted to get. And there is no 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 loot box that that involves you having to be able to get that. There is no oh you you need to to spend real money to get this. It's just play the game and you'll get it. Everything that you want you will get just by playing the game. And that's what Halo needs more when it comes when it comes to Halo Infinite. You need to have the exact same system when it comes to leveling. When it comes to getting new armor abilities. When it comes to by abilities I don't mean like you know armor lock shit like that, but. We, but I don't really, I, I mean like, you know, Halo has assassinations. So if you want new assassinations, it should come through leveling. When it comes to having, you know, a cosmetic effect on your armor, like the flame skulls, that should come through leveling. So in Halo Infinite, if anyone three for three sees this, this is how it, it, sh it should be. It should be just like, it should be just like Halo Reach. Where everything in a game that you unlock comes through leveling throughout the game. And that's how gaming needs to be in the future in general, not even just with Halo games, but all shooters needs to have it to where your unlocks come through just playing the game, leveling, and that's it. You know, have milestones people complete to, to unlock exclusive things that you can't, that you don't want people to be able to just get through leveling. But it, it still means, hey, just play the game. Like, hey, have, have a milestone. Hey, if you, if you want the blue flame scroll, scroll for Halo Reach, if you want to put that in Halo Infinite, have a milestone. It's like, hey, complete 50 games of insert game mode to unlock the flame blue helmet flame the flame blue cosmetic effect play 50 games of breakout or win 50 games of breakout make it you can make it a little bit more difficult but that's about it it shouldn't be based on anything other than just playing the game that's, that's what we as gamers want from video games we just want to play it and that's it we don't want to have to do anything extra like paying you to do things we should have to we don't want to pay you extra to unlock in-game content. Now, a lot of people don't mind it. A lot of people don't mind it. They don't mind spending extra cash here or there. But for the most part, when it comes to unlocking anything, it should always be based. It should always be be based upon just unlocking and playing the game. But with all that said, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you all for watching. It's been a pretty long video. If you enjoyed it, please do leave a like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon. See me notified when I do upload. I have started uploading daily, even though uh, I did have a, a film ream this past weekend. So I didn't upload on Monday or on Friday of last week. But um, if you guys enjoyed the video, again, just go ahead and hit, hit the follow, hit the subscribe button as well. If you want to see me live stream on Twitch, Head over to Twitch.com, link to that, be in the description box below, and give me a follow on Twitch. Again, thank you guys for watching, hope you all enjoy. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.